So all you rural living folks, you'll understand this. You, you got a handful of things you got to get when you come to the big city, which to me, the big city is Marquette. It's like 23,000 people. <laughs> and uh, you end up spending a lot more because you walk around and you realize you need a bunch of stuff. So while I was here, I ended up getting another, all the parts to make another sand point, to sink another sand point with a hand pitcher because I love the one that I have on the beach and I think I'm gonna put one on in, at the deer camp. So I always have water. So anyways, let's hit the road. Let's get back to town so we can keep working on the big barge. All right guys, so this is my buddy Mike. He's kind of my solar expert here in town and uh, he's gonna help me probably pretty much do it. I'm going to help him is a better way to put it. Um, set up the solar and the Beagle Barge here. So he's ex explaining to me with a little schematic um, how this is going to work. So let's just hone in on this. Okay. That's, uh, like I said, this is going to be the rough draft right here because we still need to put in maybe some, or not maybe, we need to put some cutoff switches at the uh, at the battery itself. But your motor battery, which will be charging off of the outboard to go to a distribution block for all your Boat needs your navigation, interior lights, exterior navigation lights, so on and so forth. So this distribution block will divvy out positive and negative. And then on the negative side is where we'll meet your solar battery bank and your motor battery bank here. Now at the top side where the motor battery comes in a distribution block, you'll also run a line to a battery isolator um, on that side. And on the other side of the battery isolator, which is also positive, it'll run to the solar battery bank. Now what this will do is when the outboard is charging uh, the motor battery, this battery isolator will connect, link the two battery banks together anytime it sees anything over 13.3 voltage, which is obviously at a charge rate on a 12 volt system. So if the outboard's charging up the motor battery and it sees 12 and 13.3, it's gonna open up the link here and charge the solar bank. And vice versa, if you're not running and you're sitting and it's sunny out, your charge controller will be here connected to the bank as well we'll open up that valve and we'll uh, charge your motor battery. And then, you know, and then you have that. So, and then we're gonna get everything set up. With the, obviously, you gotta get fuses on everything. The distribution block is already fused, you know, for all your uh, your loads on that side, so. Do I need to order another fuse block? Well, we're, uh, we're gonna do two, uh, ma obviously, master fuse right at, the, at each bank. Well, this is only a single battery, but at this, so this battery bank, and this battery itself, we're going to do master fuses. And then I would like to get um, a marine switch, kill switch, so that you can just turn all this off. Like a perco switch? Yeah. Okay, I think I have one in my pile, so. Right, and then we'll figure out where we're going to link that in at, and then this will this will effectively run on the solar end. Okay, awesome, man. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, Mike, what did I get in the mail today? Well, you got this shiny new eBay Chinese made yeah. uh, charge control, solar charge controller. Mm -hmm. This is uh, rated for 60 amps, so it doesn't matter the voltage. It does 12 up to 48 volts at 60 amps. So um, on a 48 volt system, this will handle almost 3,000 watts of panel. And here we're gonna set up on a 12 volt system, which will max out about 800. These particular charge controllers, um, as long as you get the ones that are listed as an M118 are excellent charge controllers. They're, they run actually really cool. They've been, uh, they've, they've paid their dues, if you will. Yeah, you have um, them at your house, don't you? Yeah, I have one at my house, and uh, you know, I have a high-end equipment too, but this thing pulls, you know, pulls no punches with being able to run constantly. And even, which is really strange for Chinese electronics, runs in excess of what they rated for. So when this is, says it's set 60 amps, which is, you know, like I said about the, um, i do the math off the top of my head, but this thing will put out about 850 watts if you had it hooked up to it. On this boat, we'll have it at a nice, just under 700 watts. So it'll run cool, stable, um, unless it's 
for some reason one of the you know dot but other than that these things are really well known to run good and they're not expensive either they're, yeah. they're very inexpensive even if they last for a year or two it's still just replace it and you're still under all the u.s made high-end stuff eh? right and I, i've seen people that are running these hard and on uh you know, homesteads for you know over at, almost half a decade at this point now wow so and that's running hard and hard climbing too so yeah i'll should, put should be great on this boat i'll put a link in the description guys mm -hmm. uh, if you guys want to follow up on it yep. Okay, guys, I figure I should turn the phone on here. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, and I'm forgetting to film some of the process. So I started cutting down the bookcase. I might have to do some more, you know, angling and so forth, you know, to make it just right. But I, I got it, uh, you know, in a spot for the moment. And I think putting on this new steering wheel is going to work. It's, I had to do a little finagling with the the woodruff key that goes on the shaft uh, but I got to slip on and I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of it back together here and see what happens okay guys so this is what I came up with I've got this helm I might have to over time adjust the angle of the steering wheel depending on whatever seating I get uh, but this steering wheel went on, <laughs> surprisingly, amazingly, and it does make it a lot easier to steer. I think it looks better, too. I'm probably going to mount the controls up here on the wall. I need to go home and get a spacer, piece of wood. I know what I'm going to use. Kind of build it out a little bit so when I'm driving, you know, basically standing right here, you know, steering with this hand, more than likely, and running the controls this way. Kind of keeps them out of the way, too. I've noticed with all the boats, you know, I've had over the years that if you have your controls right behind your seat, you know, they can, when you're moving your seat, twisting it around, whatever, you know, you can sometimes hit the controls and they kind of get in the way. So it is nicer to keep them up out of the way a little bit. That's what I found. Of course, it makes it a little harder to reach them when you're in the seat. But my thoughts are the way I'm going to use this boat, you know, just kind of a lot of relaxing five, six miles an hour down the rivers and such. I'll just set it. You know at a speed and then i'll sit and i can kind of sit you know what i did in the shanty beagle is i kind of sat sideways just had one hand on the wheel and i kind of just you know made adjustments while looking you know that direction uh and then when something you know a barge is coming or there's some reason to start making adjustments to dock or whatever you know you stand up and then you have all your controls just kind of right here at your waist height so and i can stand right here like i did with the shanty beagle <laughs> and look out the front window and just reach down with one arm and do some steering so fine tune it we got lots of time got all the time in the world this would be a good start tell me what you guys think i'll show you what's going on up here guys so in case you ever do this i probably should notch that out a little more to reduce that bend because the cable is kind of pinched right here. I mean, they're designed to do that to a certain extent, kind of like steering or uh, throttle cables, but anywhere you can reduce a, a bend, you know, the better. So I'll probably notch that out a little more. Okay guys, well I think that's enough for today. I think I might have enough to give you guys another little episode, a couple little, uh, some progresses. There's Wavy over there making some noise. The next thing I'm going to try to tackle is some doors, a door on the front and a door on the back. Not, not quite sure how I'm going to do it, but uh, that's just part of it. <laughs> just keep trudging along. So if you got any advice or ideas, uh, let me know in the comment section. Doing doors next. So thanks for coming along. I'll catch you guys later. You ready to go home?